In other words, driving point has in-phase component as well as out-of-phase component. So, let me summarize what we studied today. First, okay, driving point impedance is really exciting measure. First, because it represents what's going to happen at positive x-axis, even though that is a point measurement. And the other one is driving point impedance has a real part and imaginary part. Okay, real part represents in-phase component with the force and imaginary part expresses out of phase component with the force between force and velocity. So that is very interesting. Okay, what if I have a string that look like this? I have, this is L, and I am exciting over here with what would be the driving point impedance look like. We know that this can be regarded as two semi, I mean two string that has length L over two, All right? So what really happened over here by measuring drive, I mean driving point impedance is same as this, but L is L over two, okay? What would be driving point impedance if I excite over here? We have to we have to work on how we assume possible solution, and we have to work out the the force and velocity thing, and that will provide us driving point impedance. That will be very valuable to exercise, right? Okay. Let me give you some tip because some of you do not really understand the phase relation between force and velocity and physical implication, okay? So let's start with simple mass spring dash bus system. This is well explained in the appendix of my book. Okay. Suppose I am exciting this with the force. And assume that the displacement would look like y. Okay. And we know that the governing equation of this is where y is the displacement in x direction, okay, and s is a spring constant, and r is 
viscose damping coefficient. Okay, the reason why we are using rather different notation than, than the notation you can usually see in vibration book is because first we already use the notation C to express the speed of propagation. Right? We normally use a C to express the damping coefficient or a viscose damping coefficient in the vibration. And then we already use a K to express the wave number. So we are, I am using S to express the linear spring constants. Okay, that's the only difference. Okay, then if I plug these two components, two expression over here, then what I will get is minus omega square m, okay, minus j omega r, okay, uh, plus s. Then I have y. exponential minus j omega t and also I have f exponential minus j omega t. Okay? Because I, we have the same time constant, time expression, we can risk disregard this part and this shows why. What that does it, what that really means. Because Y and F is complex. In other words, the displacement and the force has a real part and imaginary part. What's the meaning of imaginary part of displacement? What's the meaning of imaginary part of force? Did you feel the imaginary part of force in your life? When I push this, is this imaginary part or real part? No, right? The reason why we are using imaginary part, real part, is simply because it is convenient. Why it is convenient? It is not convenient for us at the moment because it's really hard to, I mean, it's, it's, it's nonsense to think about imaginary part of force. There's, there's a force is a force. What, I mean, imaginary part of force is really doesn't really make sense. Right? Reason is, okay, we have a diff differential equation. For example, if I have a general excitation force look like this. Okay. Okay. This excitation force can be regarded as the superposition of this sign or this sign as well as some this type of cosine plus some other cosine, right? Right? And because this is the linear differential equation, and we can argue that if I solve the solution for this type of sine excitation, and this sine excitation, and if we got it, and then I can, I add up all the response, then that is the response due to some of these sine excitation, right? Okay. That's what we are doing for Fourier series thing. 